In this exercise, we're going to take a quick look at making some entities that are compatible with the Blender map exporter so that when they are exported with the map file and then imported into Radiant, we'll get game specific entities in the imported map that are converted from the objects that are used in Blender. So whilst we can use blocks and shapes as proxies for our entities, these will be exported as brush volumes. So what we can do instead is use empty objects. So from the add menu, empty, and then in this case, we want cubes. So if we drop one of those in, it'll appear at the cursor's location. So view, frame selected, and it will default to Blender's scaling. So what we need to do is change the size, but with these being empties, they don't have physical dimensions in the same way that brush volumes have. So that's the player start, and it has dimensions. Empties don't, they only have scale. So what we can do here is change the size of our cubes relative to the scaling that we set up for map editing in Blender. So that's a grid scale that's 8 with subdivisions that's 8, which obviously means that in our units we've got the scene set up to use none so that we can access subdivisions. So to do this, all we need to do is select the empty object. And although its scale is one by one by one at present, by default, its size is essentially two units by two units by two units. It's essentially the same size as the default cube when that's dropped into the scene. So to change the scaling, so, for example, if we want to create an info underscore null, those are 16 by 16 units in Radiant. So to get that, all we need to do is double up, essentially, multiply our base units, so 2 by 2 by 2, in this case, by 8 to get the 16. So in scale, if we type 8 by 8 by 8, we'll get what we can now use as an info underscore null. So what we can do here, once we've done that, object data properties, change the name, info underscore null. And then in viewport display, we can enable name so that we can see the name and axes, and this will give us our orientation so that we know where our object is going to be positioned in terms of its orientation. The only disadvantage of using empties is that they are always wireframes. So that's an info null. If we wanted an info player start, we go to add empty cube again, drop in another cube, and again it's appeared at the cursor. Let's just move this out of the way so that we can see it. So the player start is generally going to be 32 by 32 by either 56 upwards of however large the character is. So this is an info player start. So multiplying by 2, we want x16, y16, and z26, and 
and that will give us a player start entity. We can obviously change the size relative to the character that's being represented. So a monster might be 24, 24, 32. But these will do the same thing again. Info player start and just bring this back down to the size that it should be 16, 16 by 32. That's fine. So, just as a reminder, this is representative of the entities in Radiant. The scaling that we add here is not converted into entity properties. The entities are fixed items in their own right. So all this does is act as a visual proxy for level design in Blender so that we can scale the entire level relative to these entities. And again, they're always wireframes rather than skinned objects. For lights, we just need to use actual light volumes. So add light and we want point light. Although other light types may be supported, it's best just to stick with the default, which is a point light. That will drop it in again at the cursor. Let's move this here. So we'll want light data properties or object data properties. The scaling is going to be relatively large. Change the color. And that will be interpreted in the map file as an actual light source. So with those in place, let's just save this file, save as entity test, save as, and then export. So wireframes, select all, make sure one of them is the active object. So shift click, Make sure we are selecting only the objects that we want to include. So remember to exclude any camera objects or other items that should not be included in the map file. Then file, export, quick map. Then in our settings, disable triangulate object type, we want meshes to brushes, nerves ignore, lights adaptive, empties as entities, grid scale, replicate the grid setup in Blender, so that's eight, depth, zero, scale, precision, those are okay, output format, Quake for classic editing, UVs standard, flags, no flags, output, we want a file. Then we can change common cork, change the texture, function group is fine, and then just export. So that's exported the file, which we can now open in Radiant. So in Radiant, all we need to do is file, open, browse to the file,
select and then just click open what we should find are our entities there's the real player start there's our brush volume proxy we've also got our null object we can check entities inspector there's the info null got a light and there's the player start it's brought in the color from our red light as well so we can color the lights in blender and it will import those as colored light objects so that's making some entities using empties so that we have correct proxies in Blender that can be exported using the Blender map export script.